Welcome back. Today I would like to talk to you about polar area or finding the area under a polar curve. And uh, to start this discussion out, we really need to think about what a polar curve looks like. And so usually when we write a polar curve, we write something like r equals some function of theta. Okay, So r equals some function of theta. And uh, it might look something like the following. So let's say that I have my axes, and I have this polar curve up here. Okay, this is my curve uh, f of theta. And you've got a pl an angle that I'm integrating to and from. So maybe this is the angle uh, alpha. And maybe this is the angle beta. Okay. And I'd like to know how much area is, quote, under this curve. And what I mean by under is that it's inside this little region here. Okay. So I want to know how much is between angle alpha and angle beta. All right, so if I want to find this area, it's not just plug the function in and hope for the best. Because remember when I integrated before, in, um, when I was learning to integrate for the first time on a rectangular curve, what was I actually doing? I had an A, I had a B, and what I was trying to do is I divided this thing up into rectangles, correct? I chopped this thing up into rectangles and then added up the rectangles and let the number of rectangles get large. Well, this isn't rectangles, so uh, I'm not going to be able to do that in the same way. So let me clear this off and let's take a look at this again. So I have this polar curve. Uh, I'm going from alpha, angle alpha to angle beta here. This is my angles. Uh -huh. And what I want to do is I just want to say, okay, I'm not chopping this up into rectangles. If I'm not chopping it up into rectangles, what am I chopping this thing up into? And the answer is I'm going to chop it up into little pieces of pi. Okay, so let me draw one of them. So I'm going to have a little, I guess you could call it a sector or a piece of pi. And if I cut this thing into little pieces of pi, then it will fill up the shape in some way. Now it's not perfect, but remember rectangles aren't perfect under a curve either. And as I get more and more small slices of pi, it's going to better and better approximate the actual area that's in that under that curve. So what I want to do is take this one piece right here and blow it up a little bit and look at it closer. Okay, so this is my angle. Uh, I'm going to call this theta sub k minus 1. This is my angle theta sub k. Alright, uh, and so I have a change in theta from one from theta sub k minus one to theta sub k. And I'm assuming here that I had just chopped this guy up into lots of little pieces of pi. Okay, and I'm just looking at the kth piece of pi. All right, so the angle between these two guys, I'm gonna call delta sub theta sub k. That's the angle between the two, um, my starting angle for this piece of pi here, and my ending angle here for my piece of pi. Now I need to know, well, how do I actually figure out the area of a piece of pi? And you can think about it a little bit if you want to, if you want to pause it and think, what is the area of a kind of piece of pi? But if you don't want to wait, the area is the following. Well. It's the theta value, um, theta, divided by 2, 
times r squared. That's just the general uh, equation for area of a slice of pi. But in our case, uh, what is theta? Well, theta is my delta sub uh, is my delta theta sub k. So I guess I could plug that in for my theta. That's the angle that I'm working with right now. Uh, and then r is going to be a random point in here that I choose to be the radius of my circle. So maybe I'll call that r sub k star. Okay, because I just choose some random angle in there to represent my radius. So I pick a radius and I get r sub k star. I square that guy, divide him by 2, and then I multiply by the theta, which in this case is delta theta sub k. Okay, and that's the area of just one piece of the pi. So if I wanted the area for all of the pieces of the pi uh, together, then I'd add up all of those. So my area that I'm looking for, uh, this is just the area of this one piece. Uh, this is the area of all the pieces, it would be approximately, um, well, sum k going k going from 1 to n of r sub k star quantity squared over 2 times delta theta sub k. And then if I wanted it to be exact, now I would let the number of pieces of pi go to infinity. So I take the limit as n goes to infinity. So let's rewrite it that way. So I'd get that the actual area that I'm looking for here is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k going from 1 to n of r sub k star squared over 2 times delta theta sub k. Okay, but this is a Riemann sum, and we're used to Riemann sums, and we know how to rewrite them as integrals. So now I'm integrating starting at angle alpha, ending at theta uh, uh, of beta of the function. So this integration sign kind of takes care of the limit and the summation part. Now I'm looking at what's the function that goes in there. Well, the r sub k star, as it gets squished in between two thetas, as the pieces of pi get big, uh, smaller and smaller, this just becomes r. And it will be squared over 2. And the delta x sub k just turns into d, uh, yeah, delta theta sub k turns into d theta. Okay, but remember that r is a function of theta. So we could write this as integral from alpha to beta of f of theta squared over 2 d theta. And this is how we calculate area in polar. Okay, so you have a starting, uh, you have a starting angle alpha, you have an ending angle beta, and you have some curve between the two. And when you use this process and plug in the correct value, which is the function squared over two, remember in rectangular, you just plug in the function to the integral and everything's wonderful. If you do that in polar, you get something that is incorrect. You must plug in the function squared over 2 to the integral to get anything that has value. So you need to, once you do that though, you get this nice area under the curve and everything is wonderful. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so now let's take a look at some homework to kind of see how this is put into practice.